All right, everybody. Okay, so it's part three of my weightlifting journey. And I've got a new microphone here I'm testing out, so it's underneath my shirt here. So yeah, let's see how that works. So I'm not gonna edit anything like I said. So it's part three of my weightlifting journey, raw and unedited. Let me back up a little bit here. Raw and unedited. So let's go, where do we lead off, leave off before for number two? I think we let off, let me move this camera. Since I can't edit, I have to do it while we're um, sitting here. Well, let's go. <laughs> yeah, I think we let uh, we we ended off on um, part two at the grade thirteen end of high school, right before going to university. So I'm going to start up on my first year of university. So it was 1991 to 92. The first year of university, I was in um, residence. I was at the Delaware Hall at the University of Western Ontario. This was my first year. Uh, my my, my good friend, Rob Langeo, was also my roommate in Delaware Hall, because we made that work out. And yeah, and we, we worked out a lot. <laughs> we were supposed to go to school. He was in kinesiology, I was in engineering. So it was the first year. Uh, the gym we used to go to there, I think we used to call it the dungeon. So it was pretty cool. So we started working out there on a regular basis. That was probably the coolest gym I've ever worked out at at the time. It had all metal weights. So this is this is back almost like well, 30 years ago. Holy smokes! So all the weights were metal. So every time you did like you worked out, you hear the clang, cling, clang, clang, and they had the leg press. They had all the cool stuff there. So I recall like times of us like I remember doing pull ups, bench press, all that kind of stuff, and, then, and all the weights were steel. Even the dumbbells were kind of steel, and they're always kind of loose. So every time we curl, we make that ching, ching, ching. You know that jingle jangle of like the um, old school weights? So it's kind of really old school if you think back about it. Uh, back then, yeah, so I would have been like 19 years old or so. And I thought I was huge, I was like 140 something pounds. So my whole goal was to get up to 150. I don't think I got up to it that year. So we were in residence, we had the meal plans. We could eat all, basically almost could eat all you could eat almost. You get a card, you swipe, and you just take food. So we used to eat a lot. And on top of that, I had the protein shakes. So I was all about trying to get as big as possible. Because like I said before in previous episodes here, I was really, really small, right? So the big thing for me is put on weight. And I, yeah, so, we, so me and Rob used to go work out there a lot. A couple of stories I remember is um, we used to do weights, we used to do legs, and then we came back to the residence, I think it was like three floor, three stories high. We'd put each other on our, we, I'd put them on my back, and then I'd walk up all the stairs, and then it would come all the way back down, then we'd switch, and he'd do the same thing. But we emphasized like walking up and flexing our calves, because we're trying to get extra calf workouts. We did some weird stuff. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, and then I remember going in there with, with Rob also on uh, leg days, and we do leg press, and we do a lot of drop sets. So we, we were pretty intense, because back then it wasn't about really smart training, just about we try to, we basically would try to destroy ourselves every workout, right? <laughs> so uh, we go in there and do leg press, we do drop sets. So we do like a really heavy set, and we take a strip off some weights. Actually, we do like a just like a single drop set. We strip off weight and then go as many reps as we could until we couldn't even move it. So basically, we probably we probably go up as high as we could and then cut the weight in half and then just rep it out. I remember doing like 20 to 30 reps after the heavy set. So those are some pretty crazy days. That's probably the days where I made my most weightlifting gains, I guess. Those were during my mostly my hardcore newbie gain stage. Not that I had major gains, but I got close to where, I don't know, my, my foundation, right? So we trained legs and everything. So that, that's back at University of Western Ontario. I don't really have much to say for the, these stories. So I'm trying to think about it. I, I remember going in there doing flies. Flies was a fun thing we used to do a lot. Chest flies. I don't do those as much anymore for some reason. I did a lot of dumbbell chest flies. Like that was a pretty popular thing. And there's another guy on our floor named Vinit. And he would come with us down there to train too as, as well. And I remember doing pull-ups and stuff. And his big thing that he loved doing, and he had pretty good lats. The thing that he loved doing was behind the neck pull-ups. And we used to do that a lot. Because right? back then, no one ever talked about being behind the neck pull-downs or pull-ups was bad. And I still don't think it is that bad. It's just a matter of what the form you use and the feel. Like if, if it's not feeling good and you're jerking yourself up and down, 
it might be bad for the shoulders, right? But if you're using good form, you're feeling the lats, and you have flexibility enough back there to do it, I think it's a good exercise. So yeah, so and I also remember another guy, there's a couple other guys on the floor that were into working out too. The one of the guys was actually a national level triathlete. Here's a story I remember. Cause I'm just going off the top of my the seat of my pants here. Like I said, I'm not gonna edit anything. So this is first year of university. My workout, my journey with weights, my weightlifting journey. Cause remember we were really into working out and running and fitness and all that kind of stuff. So we said, oh yeah, we can, we, we can go for a jog with this guy, no problem. Cause he was a triathlete. So he would go out and run and all that kind of stuff. He's on a national team up. So, so he was out jogging, Rob and I went with him. We thought, okay, this guy's this is pretty easy at first. Cause he goes at a certain pace, right? We thought, oh, that's easy. So we were hanging with him. But then after 20, 30 minutes, he, he didn't slow down at all. He just kept a continuous pace, but kept it going. And we eventually lost him, but Rob and I are more at the same level. So we lost, I think his name was Stefan. I'm not positive. Stefan, we lost him. But apparently he went out for a two hour jog and came back. <laughs> so we were probably gone about 45 minutes. We went out 25 minutes, but we had to come back. So, so he was going out for like a two hour run. So he, so yeah, basically at that level, what is it, it's all about conditioning and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. He just kept a consistent pace and kept it the whole time, right? So yeah, we came back and then eventually he came back and apparently he was out for two hours. So that's one little story. What else we got here? I'm just gonna say something else. That's about it. I don't really have many, many, like I said, I don't have much story. That's just, that's just uh, part three. That's the, uh, my little weightlifting, my journey with weights, my weightlifting journey, raw and unedited, part three. There you go.